Welcome to this, one of the videos in a series for Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults prepared by Our Lady of the Greenwood. The topic of this video is Estacology. Resources that were used for this topic are the Journey of Faith series, which we hand out to all of the students, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the New American Bible, and a special article written by Father William Saunders titled, What is the Basis for Belief in Purgatory? Estacology also is known as the last things. It deals with the consideration of what happens after we die and leave this world. As Christians, we find comfort and hope in our belief that Jesus has conquered death, granted us eternal life, and promised to come again in final triumph over evil. Estacology deals with what comes at the end of a person's life, at the end of human history and creation, at the second coming of Christ. Let's explore a case. We'll call this Joe. Joe's experiences will help us better understand the general estacology of all humanity and creation. Regarding life, death, and particular judgment, Joe began his journey of faith by baptism. During his life, Joe gave into the temptation of sin and used the sacraments of the church to stay on his own pathway to holiness. When Joe dies, he immediately faces God's judgment. This is called the particular judgment because it's given to each individual. Through Joe's particular judgment, he will either be granted immediate entrance into heaven, be purified in purgatory before entering heaven, or be condemned to hell. But what if Joe is ignorant of the gospel? What if he hasn't been baptized? Well, God provides for salvation of the whole world through Christ's death and resurrection. Those ignorant of Jesus, but living God's will, are inherently responding to Jesus. The Holy Spirit offers to all the possibility of being made partakers of the Paschal Mystery. Every man who is ignorant of the Gospel of Christ and of his Church, but seeks the truth and does the will of God in accordance with his understanding of it, can be saved. Let's talk about heaven. The Church doesn't have a definitive vision of heaven. No one can say how similar or different it will be from the life and the world we know or dream of. What we can say is that we only know everyone and everything in it will be perfectly redeemed and in full union with the Trinity. If Joe dies in God's grace and friendship, perfectly purified, his soul will go straight to heaven. Heaven is the ultimate end and fulfillment of the deepest human longings, the state of supreme definitive happiness. Scripture uses many images to describe heaven, a heavenly city, an eternal dwelling, a glorious wedding banquet. Pointing toward supreme happiness that's beyond human understanding is what heaven is really all about. Now let's talk about hell. If Joe rejected God's love and mercy, he will end up in hell, which is eternal separation from God. It is Joe's free will, given by our Creator, that allows for acceptance or rejection of his covenant. Each person has the choice of their ultimate destiny while living in this world. Finally and definitively choosing to reject God leads to eternal separation from God in hell. God predestines no one to go to hell. For this, a willing turning away from God through mortal sin is necessary and persistence in it until the end. Let's talk about purgatory. If Joe responds to God's mercy but isn't free from all attachments to sin, he can be assured of eternal salvation, but must go through purification after death to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven. According to Vatican II, the Church has consistently believed in a purification of the soul after death. 
It's rooted in the Old Testament second book of Maccabees, where Judas Maccabees made atonement for the dead that they might be free from sin. Pope Gregory, circa 604, said, As for certain lesser faults, we must believe that before the final judgment there is a purifying fire. In the early church, Pope St. Gregory said, Let us not hesitate to help those who have died and to offer our prayers for them. St. Ambrose preached, We have loved them during life. Let us not abandon them in death. In other words, the tradition of the church has always urged the faithful to pray for those who have gone before them in death. The only reason that that makes sense is if we're believing that we can help them through their purification process. So, the doctrine of purgatory is that if we die with venial sins on our soul without having done sufficient penance for our sins, God in his love, mercy and justice will purify our souls, cleanse the lens, so to speak. After such purification, the soul will then be united with God in heaven and enjoy the beatific vision. Let's talk about apostolic blessing. If Joe receives the last rites of the church due to being close to death, then Joe can receive the apostolic pardon at the discretion of the priest. This results in all of Joe's sins being forgiven and all his atonement being met. If Joe dies then, he goes immediately to heaven. Now, regarding the second coming of Christ, as the Nicaea Creed says, Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. So, this generates the kingdom of God. If Joe chose God with his life, he'll enjoy eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Humanity, the entire universe, and all creation will be redeemed, transformed in some marvelous manner to share in eternal life. Let's talk a little bit about what our bodies and souls will look like at that point in time. Considering the transfiguration of Jesus, the Gospel has several stories of the glorious transfiguration of Jesus at Mount Tabor in Galilee. One explanation is his face did shine as the sun and his garments became white as snow. So let's talk about the transfiguration of us all. At the final judgment, our bodies will be reunited with our souls and be glorified. Is this the transfiguration of Jesus, a harbinger of things to come for us? So there you have it. We die. We go through a particular judgment. We have three options. We can go to heaven. We can end up in hell. Or we can go to purgatory for purification and then heaven. Aside from that is the parousia, the second coming of Christ, which is the resurrection of the dead and the rejoining of our bodies and souls, general judgment, and eternity. That's it for this particular topic. Thank you so very much for coming along with us on this journey in faith through Our Lady of the Greenwood.